Hello folks, welcome to another paint along. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, today we're going to be doing lovebirds. Ta-da! Um, this is a really nice, super simple one. Uh, lots of colour as usual, and it's nice silhouette work as well. So um, I will begin with just telling you what I'm going to be using today. So I uh, always use acrylic paints, but if you haven't got acrylics, then use whatever you've got, poster paints, etc. Um, I always try and use the same five colours as well, just to keep things really super simple. I will always use, <coughs> sorry, I will always use a black and a white. I will always use a yellow and a blue, and then sometimes I switch between a red and a pink. Okay, so sometimes I'm using a red, sometimes I'm using a pink. But today's paint along is in fact going to use a pink. Let's check that in. <laughs> I'm going to use a pink today. So that is black and white, blue and yellow, and magenta pink. Then three brushes. We always use the same three brushes. We've got the flat top pen. pen. Oh. I've been on the beach all day today, so I'm just going to warn you now, my words aren't working. Um, this is a flat top brush, one of them. Then we've got the round top brush, round top. And then we've got the, whoops, the super skinny. Super skinny, nice, tiny, detailed brush. And try and, if you're going to look for one of these, try and get one with a lovely point on it. Because it's that point that will make your life a whole lot easier when you're doing the detailed stuff at the end. Okay? Same three brushes, flat top, round top, super skinny. Then you will need yourself a little, uh, little tub of water for cleaning your brushes. And we'll probably change that water at some point during the paint along. So feel free to do that whenever you need to. Otherwise, I'm going to give you a heads up when it, when it probably needs to be changed. My very posh palette is, in fact, a paper plate. Um, so there's, that's useful for mixing up your colours on. There we have that. Um, canvases, I'm using a mixed media um, acrylic art board. These are made by Dale Rowney, but I believe there's other brands available. Um, and I get these online on Amazon, um, and you get a pack of 10 uh, for 20 pounds. So that's Dale Rowney mixed media art boards. You can, however, use stretch canvases, which look like a wooden frame with a stretch canvas around it. And they're available in B&M, Home Bargains, The Range, Wilkinson's, they're all over the place. Um, so they're just as good as well. The only reason I don't tend to use um, stretched canvases at the moment or anymore is just because they take up so much space. They're a lot thicker than these. This is almost like a very thin bit of cardboard, you see? So that's the only reason. Otherwise, I would use stretched canvas. All right. Other really useful things is kitchen towel, just in case it gets messy. Sometimes it does. I'm a bit of a messy worker, I'm not going to lie. Um, and then this is super duper useful. This, um, I know this is a heat gun, but a, but a hairdryer um, will work just as well. So if you've got a hairdryer, blow dryer, that kind of thing, grab it because it's really useful for drying off the um, different layers and stages on this one, okay? Uh, but obviously a hairdryer is probably safer than one of these. So hairdryer is probably the preference on that one. Right, let's put that there. I've got myself a stool, I'm sat today. I've actually sat down, this is rather nice. It's very, very handy. Okay, so with this one, we're going to cover the whole canvas to start off with. We're going to start off with this lovely yellow glow in the middle. Then we add an orange, and then we kind of bring it out to a pure pink. And then finally, we add these purple bits in. So we're going to mix quite a lot of the colour on the canvas itself. But I'm actually going to need to mix the two colours up to start off with. And that, folks, is an orange and this purple. So we're gonna mix that up now in, in anticipation of painting the background. So a bit of orange, therefore we need some yellow. Big dollop of yellow there. Boom. And a dollop of pink. Oof. Steady on Timbrel, there's an awful lot of pink there. And then some blue, because we're gonna need that for the purple. There you are. There's a bit of the blue. All right. Now I'm gonna mix this up, I think, using my flat top brush. What I wanna try and do is mix these two colors up in a small area, if I can, a small area, so I'm not painting my plate because all that happens then, paint dries out um, and you've got no paper plate left to mix colors. So let's try and do this in a smaller area. I want a bit of water to start off with. 
And let's take a big dollop of that old yellow there and pop that there. So I've taken some yellow, I'm gonna mix in a bit of pink. So the best way to mix it if you're not gonna paint your whole plate is to sort of flip it and put it down and dab it. Just keep dabbing it. And there you go, that's starting to look a bit orange. Lovely. There you go. It's looking good. I'm happy with that. Try and get all that paint off my brush. I'm not wasting any. Let's give that a wash. And we can move on to making purple. Whoops. Splish splash it everywhere. So let's take a bit of the yellow. No, 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 let's not do that. Oh, I tell you what, don't need any yellow. What we do need, my bad, is pink. So let's take a big dollop of pink, put that over there. And then I would add the blue gradually because the blue's a real strong, powerful color. So you may well overpower it. Let's see what color I've got there. That's looking all right. I might just put a little bit more blue in there. Flip that, lovely. Right, I'm sure we'll all have slightly different colors and that's absolutely fine. Go with the purple that you like rather than try and match mine. Okay, there. You can see that very well in this light. That's my purple, that's my orange. Let's get that paint off of there as much as possible. And let's give that a wash. Okay. Clean that brush off nicely because I'm going to be going straight into yellow and I don't want there any paint on the brush. I want it to be nice and clean. There is it, I think. Yep. Nice and clean brush. All right, so to start off with, I'm going to paint myself a nice yellow circle. So that's nice and simple. We're going to do a yellow circle. So load your brush up, bit of water, don't forget your water. And let's go. So I don't want this to go right in the centre, I'm going to go just above centre, just above centre, about here. And it's probably, let's say, about that size. Now, I'm going to work quickly here because I need this yellow to stay wet whilst I add the orange, okay? So there's a nice bit of yellow going on there because that will mean it stays wet for me. Because the next move is to not wash my brush. So I'm keeping my brush wet. It's still got the paint on there, but I'm just going to go straight into that orange paint that we mixed up. And what I'm going to do is a really but brave and confident and just put an orange ring around that, like so, orange ring. Leaving a little gap between the yellow and the orange, okay? Got to work quick, I need that yellow to be wet, I need this orange to stay wet. So... Now I can wash my brush off. This is the bit you have to be quite quick at. Wash your brush, tap off most of the um, excess water, and then I can go between the two with a crisscross, like so, a crisscross motion. There you are. To mix the two together. And this is why you need that paint to stay wet, because if this dries, well, you can't really mix the two together and you're in a whole world of pain at that point. So it all needs to stay wet. There you go. You get yourself a nice glow in the middle and an orange around the outside. Okay, I'm just gonna go over that orange a little bit because it's drying. That's the difference between these and the canvases. Canvases will probably stay wet for longer. The paint on these boards dries ever so quick because it's absorbing it. 
There you go. What are you doing in there? Look at Bay. There you go. Just gone over my orange a little bit. There you go. Now, same thing, same thing applies. I'm going to go straight into my pink. I'm not washing my brush, I don't need to. I did just pick up a bit of water though. Let's pick up some just pure pink, didn't need to wash my brush. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to put a ring around the edge. All right, leave a little gap between the two. Bit more water. Gorgeous colour that pink is, isn't it? Favourite colour, gorgeous. All right. There you go, I've left myself a little gap around me um, in between the orange and the pink. And the same thing that we did before, we wash our brush off now. Tap off the excess water. And then we can crisscross between the two. Same thing. Crisscross going half over the orange and half over the pink. There you go. <coughs> And because those two colours are wet, they mix together. Nice bit of shading going on there. That's all right, that's looking all right. Just to point out on this one, I've actually got tape all the way around my mixed media artboard because when I take it off, I end up with a lovely little white frame all the way around the edge. Um, but it also keeps it flat for me as well. It stops it moving around. Um, but I, I am going to the edge of my canvas. It looks like I'm not, but either side of here, I've actually gone over the tape. So I know that I've gone to the edge of my canvas. I just wanted to point that out so that when you guys are um, using your old canvases, you do want to paint all the way to the very end, the very edges of your canvas. In fact, if you're using a canvas, a stretched canvas, you probably want to paint the edges as well, because once you put it up on the wall, You'll be able to see the sides. So bear that in mind if you're using canvases. Rightio, so I've been waffling, so that pink has had time to dry. So I'm just going to go over it again. Because again, I want it to be nice and wet so I can shade the two colours together. There's a big bit of pink going on there. There you go. Nice bit of pink. Now I don't need to wash my brush once again. No brush washing needed. I pick up the purple, bit of water perhaps, and I just go straight into the purple paint. And we're going to use exactly the same thing. We're kind of getting the hang of this now. So now we're going to go around this edge with the purple leaving a slight gap, like so. There you go. And then up here as well. Beautiful colours, these. There's my slight gap. Ooh, just mix up enough purple there. So there's my slight gap like we did before. Wash your brush off. Again, tap off the water. Oh, splash yourself in the face. <laughs> and then go half over your pink and half over your uh, purple. And really work those two colours together. If it's getting a bit dry, perhaps put a bit of water with it. There you go, that freed that up a bit. There you go. And voila, background done. Boom. Put that to one side. Um, 
Yeah, let's put that to one side. So I need that for now. We do need this to be dry, okay? So I'm gonna give this a good blast with the old hairdryer heat going wherever and get all of this super dried. So you can see, I think you can just about see where my um, tape is all the way down there. So I have covered the whole canvas. So make sure that you've done the same, covered it all. Okie doke, go. A while to dry that one. Super thick paint, that's why. Right, so something on here. What's this? I need to come off. Okay, well, you can stay. And um, let's wash that brush and we can put that to one side for a second. So we don't need him. There you have it. Now my water's looking pretty, pretty mucky at the moment, but there's no point changing it because we're going to be using black paint next. So um, no need to change your water for now, but I do need a palette and I do need some black paint. So I'm just going to work with black now. Have a splodge of that. Whoops. Cool. Go on then. Sure. Eh. Done. Now, oh. so a round top brush this time. We're going to use the round top brush. And um, <clears throat> if you feel more comfortable using the super skinny at this point, then then go for it. We're going to be sketching out that that um, heart shaped branch there. I find it easier to use the round top brush. I, I don't think you need the super skinny just yet. I'll probably use the super skinny to do the um, birds and the branches, but this main tree bit here, I think we're good to go. We're good to go with this uh, round top brush. And actually it's all about the pressure you put on the brush. So the more pressure you put on the brush, the thicker stroke you're gonna get, okay? And if you want tiny little lines, you just tickle the canvas um, and you'll get a tiny little line. Round top brush, straight into the black, bit of water. I want it to be nice and watery. It will be a lot easier if it's got some water in there. Let's put a bit more water in there. There you go, that's starting to free that up a bit. And now I always want, so if you look at the mess that's on my brush there, that's gonna be really hard work to paint with. So I wanna twirl it through and drag it. So twirl and drag the brush, twirl and drag the brush, which will fully load your brush with paint whilst also making sure you've got a lovely point. So I twirl and drag my way to a point, lovely. Right, I'm gonna have to turn my back to you now, folks, because I'm going to be wonky doing my heart. Nobody wants a wonky heart. So I'm going to actually start from this point here. Okay, so in the middle of my heart is where I'm going to begin. And I'll do that side of the heart first. And then I'm going to come back and I can do that side of the heart. Okay. Radio. So I want that sort of my first point to be in the middle of my, my yellow spot. So it's about there. Let's go round. Make sure you're leaving enough space for your lovebirds. And then I want to bring it down to directly below. I left an awful lot of space for my birds, having said that. Like so. 
And just like any other tree, it's going to have a thicker bit at the bottom. Like that. And we can sort this out in a sec because actually I'm going to do hills either side. Here you go. Smooth that up there. Oh, it's very therapeutic. <sighs> okay. And now I want to do the other side. So this other side is going to come up here and it's going to spin round. I'm going to try and do a little curly whirly on the end. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, I just ran out of paint. Not such a good curly whirly this time, but it's fine. That's okay. <laughs> So there is my branch, um, my heart-shaped tree for now. At the bottom here, I just want two simple hills. So I'm gonna come from this side, just from off my tape, just off the canvas, and swoosh it down to meet the tree. And I want the same from this side as well. I'm gonna go swoosh it down to meet the tree. And then it's just a case of coloring in. I can do that. There you go, paint that all in. Again, go off the edge of your canvas. It looks like I'm not, but I am. Off the edge. Like so. Lovely. This is such a relaxing painting. Feeling super chilled already. Hopefully you guys are too. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go super skinny now. I'm going to move on to my super skinny brush. Let's get rid of that one and move on to super skinny. Okay, super skinny brush. Back into the black. So now we're going to do all the fiddly bits. We're going to do the branches. And of course, the star of the show, birdies. So let's start with... Let's start with our branches here. So I, I want to do them all the way around this heart, but I want them all growing up. So we don't have anything coming out of the bottom of these lines, okay? So they're all above that. That way the um, lovebirds can stand out, okay? And I would start inside the black, put your hand to the very end of your brush. That's the best way to get your wobbly branches. And I would try and start in the direction of the heart. So let's go like that and then take it off and wobble it wherever you fancy like so we're just going to do that all the way along give a few little secondary branches and whatnot there there you go Good. You can do that all the way along. Maybe there's a little one there. And there. Just little branches there, I think. There you go. So it might feel strange holding the brush at the very end like this, but actually it helps to get that wobbly effect going for a branch, so it's the best, best way to hold it for this sort of work.
Good. A few more. Okay. And the last branch I'm going to do is the super important one because this is the one that the birds are going to sit on. So make sure you're going to give yourself enough room here. So I don't want to put this line too far up. Let's put it there, I think, like so. And then I'm going to, I have to put that little twirly bit in. Yeah, not twirly. There. All right. Looking good. Extra branch. Fancy an extra branch there. Maybe a few more here. Okay. Lovely. One more little branchy thing I want to do as well is here. I'm going to do that so that it sort of looks like it's snaking around the trunk. All right, so all we need to do is to take it out and back in and back in and back in. Done. Just taking some of those blobs out. There. So I just went from side to side to side and it looks like there's something coiling up the middle of my tree, which I quite like. Okay, few more little bits now. Storming through, going far too fast on this one, sorry. I'll try and calm down, let's not do it too quick. <coughs> In fact, I'm gonna dry that off. There are some more bits to do here, but I'm probably gonna be leaning on this part of my painting. So I think it's a good time to stop and to give that a wash, so a wash. <laughs> to give that a dry, oh goodness me. So let's get this all dry now, so a good blast with a hairdryer. that done. Our tree is looking good. Okay, so I'm still working on black stuff. So we're going to do some funny little grasses and things coming up out of our hills. This is all a bit abstract, isn't it? Maybe not. Maybe there is a heart-shaped tree somewhere. Um, come on. So I'm twirling and dragging again. Twirl and drag. Get the point back on your brush. And I'm going to start inside the hill and I'm holding my brush again right at the very end here. I thought I could see somebody saying something then, but no. I'm holding it at the very end of the brush and then I want you to just wiggle up, wiggle up. Not very good start. Wiggle up. Let's do these in different directions. Some of them going over each other, some Wandering off over here. Let me see those in there. Let me get this closer. There you go. So you can see there's different, uh, different sized ones. They're going in different directions. They're overlapping each other. It's just a bit of interesting in the corner here. And I want them to slowly get smaller as we move along this hill. So they're getting smaller now, and then they just go to nothing. Cool. 
crazy grasses. Same again over here. Nice. I love doing silhouette work. If you've only got a short space of time, but you still want to do a nice painting, paint yourself a super lovely colourful background and then just do some silhouette work on top. So just paint something in black over it. And it's just, it's a very super simple, quick painting. And it's very efficient, efficient, effective. It looks really effective. Well, I hope you agree. And then other ones over here. There you go. A little bit perfectly formed. Make sure I've gone to the same height on both sides. Just about. Don't forget, folks, I'd love to see all of your paintings, so please do try and photograph them and send them through to me. Either put them on my page or send them through as a message. Um, but I just really do love to see them. It's fab, because we're all painting the same painting, but yet everybody's painting will look slightly different, and I just find that really interesting. So please do send them through for me. Should we do the birds? I think it's time. Let's do the birds. So... I personally, I feel that we start with both the beaks because then we know that these lovebirds are definitely going to be together. Otherwise, you do that and it, it, um, if you do it bird by bird, um, one will end up far, far away and two small. So let's get my super skinny brush with a nice point. So I'm twirl and drag, twirl and drag. There's my super little pointy bit. And then I want to do one beak. And again, they're kissing directly below the point there. So there's one beak that starts there, like so. And there's one that goes here, like so. And then I want you to come up, like so, to his head down and then a little flick for his tail there you go there's one oh he's a funny one and up round and the tail there you go so i will start and do the top part of the bird and then once you've done the top part, you can come around and do the bottom part. There you go. Roughly the same size, roughly. Might give him a bit more of a chest. There you go. They look very happy, don't they? Of course, I think I need to give him a few little legs so that he can stand up. There you go. No! Cute! I'm going to give him a slightly longer beak. Oof! He's proper, a proper little kiss there. And that on a pretty little tail. There you go. If you want a few little flicks on their tails, you can have a few little flicks on their tails. Um, fab, I think now I need to get this dry again. So let's get that brush cleaned off. 
Next up, I'm actually, I'm going to use my hands. I'm going to get dirty and, and I'm just going to go straight in, put the brushes to one side. I will have to mix some colours up, but we'll do that with the brushes. And then I'm just going to use my fingers to create all of these lovely little leaves that we've got up in the top there. All right, so let's get all of that super dry. Oops. That is dry, I imagine now, pretty much. Okay, I'm gonna mix up now a little bit of blue with some white. So I've got a blue there, that's good. Let me just get a bit of white on the go here. Whoops. Oh, I suppose I can turn around now, can't I? There, that's better. So a bit of white out now, folks. Oh, come on. Oh, running out of white. Bit of white there. And now I would like probably a paint. Oh, now's a good time to change your water, folks. Let's get that changed because we're moving into lighter colours and therefore we want that to be nice and clean. Where is my clean water? There it is. Let's pop that over there. Done. So, nice clean bit of water. That out of the way, and let's mix it. I don't know. We're not going to really. We're not going to use it to paint. So let's go round top brush to mix up this colour. So I want a bit of white, and I want to mix a bit of blue with it. Kind of going for a, a sort of baby blue colour. And the reason I'm going for blue, so method to my madness, is because that blue is going over. It falls directly, pretty much, on top of the pink, and blue on pink really pops. So that's why I'm going for blue leaves. Why not, I say, why not blue leaves? You can have green ones if you want, it's just a bit boring. Of course we're gonna have blue leaves on this tree. All right, so that's the sort of color I'm mixing up here. That's kind of a sky blue, baby bluish kind of color. We'll start with a few of those. There you go, that's nice and mixed up. Take all that paint off. I can get rid of that now. Once that gone, boom. Let's get in with our fingers. So I'm going to use my middle finger, I think, for this. And I'm just going to finger print, really. I'm putting on the paint onto my fingertip, like so. And then I'm just going to dab. I'm going to dab away. And again, these leaves are obviously growing on our branches that we painted earlier, so they're just going to be above the heart, nothing underneath or below. All right, so let's just put a few of these little beauties in. It'll run out of paint. Reload your finger. Try and cluster some of them together. Who needs paintbrushes, eh? You see how I'm trying to group some of these together, it looks a little bit more realistic. 
Not that realism was something I was going for with a heart-shaped tree. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I like using my fingers for these sorts of things because you just get more interesting shapes than you would get with a uh, brush. And let's be fair, who doesn't love a bit of finger painting? You could, of course, use a paintbrush if you're adverse to this. Oh, a few more over here. I've missed this branch entirely. Nothing on that one. Maybe there's a bit more on there. I don't know if this is leaf or blossoms. Who knows? Let's make sure it's nice and even, I reckon. Maybe a few more over here. Isn't that pretty? There's the blossom on my tree. Um, I'm gonna go back in a second, I'm gonna do some more uh, of that, but let's just get that slightly clean. I've just wiped my finger off on my trousers. Don't do that. Use kitchen towel. <laughs> and I'm gonna pick up now just pure white paint with my finger. So just pure white. And I'm just very slightly, I'm not gonna do much down here, but I want them to be tiny little dots Oops, tiny little dots on the top of these little plant things that we did earlier. So just little ones dotted in. It's quite like it when the paint starts running out on your finger because you get these sort of impressions which are really interesting. Little finger flowers. Let's put a few more on this side now. So this is a fab one for the kids to do, hopefully. Can we all enjoy it? There you go. I think that was so sweet. I'm going to put some more in this top bit now. I'm going to go white still. So let's put some white bits up in this tree now. Just a few, not on, <coughs> over the top of the blue, but sort of elsewhere. And I don't want as many of these. I'm just going to put a few here and there. These fellas have caught the light, you see? This is why these are nice and bright ones. Maybe there's a few there. Oh, I find this very relaxing. Beautiful, beautiful, right. And now I've just got some highlights to do 
but I am going to put that, oh goodness me, I'm running out of space, big star. I'm going to put that down. I'm just going to give that a quick blast now. These fingerprints will probably stay wet for a while um, because it's quite thick paint and we weren't really using water when we're using our fingers either. So it's pure paint, it's going to take a while to dry, but I am going to just help it along its way because when we do this white work next, just the little flickers of highlights, I don't want to lean on any wet paint. So get that nice and dry. brush and just pure white paint a little bit of water but not a lot because the white um, is see-through anyway so once you start putting more water in it's going to go really see-through and I don't want that so hardly any water white paint super skinny brush twirl and drag get yourself a lovely point because we're going to do some smaller detailed stuff and that point will help us so twirl and drag twirl and drag and you've got yourself a point, lovely point on that brush, yum. Um, and there's a few areas I just want to just do a little highlight. The first one is probably going to be this hill. So I'm inside the black, not right on the edge of the black, I'm inside, little gap, then the white. And I'm just going to do a little flick through there. Just a bit of highlight on the old hill, that's all. Okay. And then I want another one over here. Disappears to nothing. Fab. Then I want to put a nice highlight down the left hand side of my trunk, just the left hand side of my trunk. And what I want to try and do is to get that brush mark to nothing. Okay, so the way you do that is you put the pressure on the brush to start off with, and you slowly take the pressure off the brush. And as you do that, so you get a lovely tapered point. That's the plan. So I'm going to start on the canvas, pressure on, and then the pressure comes off until it just disappears. So I'll brighten that up a bit, I've done it a bit wobbly. That takes some concentration. Now I want to just add the same sort of thing, but up here on the two sort of tops of my heart. And it, again, it's inside the black. It's not on the edge. It's inside the black. And this definitely is. This is tickling the canvas. I'm barely touching it, okay? There we go. There's one. Whoops. Okay, just knitting that up a little bit. And let's do another one over here.
Oh, you so pretty. There you go. It's a few little highlights on the top of my heart. Now I can put some highlights inside my birdies, okay? So I'm going to just put a little bit of highlight on each of their heads, okay? There's one going in there, a little bit there, a little bit there. I haven't done it on this one, but I am going to do it on this one. I'm just going to give them a little wings. I'm just going to put a little flick of white like that to show his wings. I don't know why I just fancy it. Let's just put a little wings in. So this is the underside of his wings. There you go. Underside of wings. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. There. All right. Can touch up some of these bits here if we're not too happy with them. This looks a bit messy up here, so. There you go. How super simple and easy was that? It's fun art, not fine art, folks. And that, hopefully, was very relaxing for you all on this Sunday afternoon. And if you're not joining me live, then whatever day of the week it is, I hope you're relaxed. And like I said, if you want to do a quick painting, and uh, you haven't got long, then just do a lovely, bright, colourful background and do some silhouette work. Perhaps you could do two people stood in front of the, the sunlight here, or you could do, gosh, anything, trees going up, um, any sort of black silhouette work in front of a really bright, vivid background. Super simple, yet really, really um, cool looking, I think, personally. <laughs> so one last little step, very important step. I'm going to take my super skinny brush. Um, I'm going to pick up a bit of blue, I think, because I've got quite a lot there. A bit of blue. We are, in fact, going to sign our names. Use whichever colour that you want. But obviously, it's going to show up on the blue there. Let's get that out of the way. Let's go. D for Daffy. R for Rose. And C for Claire. That's me. Done. Very nice. My last little step is my least favourite, and that's to remove one tape. One. Oh, I hate this stuff. Oh, come on. Oh. 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 See, that's what happens if you do it quickly, folks. I took my paint off. I can go back over that in a minute. In fact, there you go. Let's cover that up. Nothing to see here. Part of the painting. One 
CrossFit. See, love that little white frame around the edge. I think it makes all the difference. So it's worth using masking tape, even though it's horrible stuff. It's worth using masking tape if you're going to use acrylic artboard, mixed media artboard, because it just finishes it off nicely. And my rule is, once you've done that, you can't touch the painting anymore, because you can only work the painting very easily. So once the tape's off, you're done. There we have it. Love birds. All completed, super simple, lovely, colourful painting. And a bit of finger painting as well. Good stuff. I will be back next week with two more paint alongs. I believe I'm doing them Wednesday and Thursday, but they are, of course, available also afterwards as pre recorded paint alongs so that you can do them at any point and at your own pace. And um, because obviously when we're live, you can't pause me, I understand. Um, but if you're watching a pre recorded one, you can pause me at any time to catch up, etc. All right. Have a wonderful rest of Sunday, whatever's left on it. Uh, I hope you've had a great weekend and have a fabulous start to the week. And I will see you uh, Wednesday, I believe. No, Tuesday, probably. I don't know. I'm going to see you twice next week. <laughs> and I will have brand new paintings for you. See you all soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.